Implanting eyeliner and getting a great healed result that lasts but doesn't migrate is a huge balancing act. And if you're in the EU, then legislation has changed that is going to mean your choices are even more limited than other people's. Let's dive in. This is what we want, great healed eyeliner results and happy clients, but it's one of the hardest things to achieve. Add in the risk of migration and eyeliner can feel like it's not worth the trouble. So what changes to pigments have happened and which ones should you be using? If you aren't aware, there are different kinds of pigments for eyeliner. There are carbon pigments and there are mineral pigments. There are also hybrids of the two. Why does the pigment you use matter? First of all, let's look at inorganic or mineral pigment. This might contain iron oxide to color it and these pigments have really big particles. The great thing about these is because they're big, they're hard for the body to move so they stay where you put them and have very little chance of migration. So this sounds like a no-brainer then. Why don't we all use this? Well, those big particles mean that you will often hear artists say they struggle to implant them. They can need a little more pressure and a lot more patience and more time on skin to implant them. Organic pigments for eyeliner mainly contain carbon and this is really black, so you're gonna get really pigmented results. This has tiny particles, so it takes so much less time and effort to get into the skin. You'll often find people say it just flies in. So less trauma because of less effort and less time on skin. So should we all use this then? Well, those tiny particles are a blessing and a curse. Because they're so small, they are easier for the body to move, and they do. If carbon black is not skillfully implanted and also at the right depth, then you risk migration. Put it into a client with lots of capillaries in the area or too close to the commissores, and that migration can be serious. So from what we've just heard, minerals are hard work, but safe. So maybe we should go for the safe option. Well, if you're in the EU, then you have another thing to take into account, REACH. This is the Registration, Evaluation, Authorization and Restriction of Chemicals. The EU has the toughest laws on chemicals in the world, and for decades, pigment companies all across the world have sought to make their pigments pass these standards. But over the last few years, these laws just got tougher. This video is brought to you by VIPMU, my very own mentorship program where we up your skills in pigments, technique, and everything else that you need to become a thriving permanent makeup artist. If you're ready to level up, click the VIPMU link below. REACH has now prevented the sale of totally inorganic pigments in the EU. So those fully inorganic, stable, non-migratory pigments can now no longer be used. All PMU pigments need to have some level of organics in them. So now that choice has been taken away, how do I feel about this? On one hand, I absolutely applaud the tightening of restrictions to make the PMU world more safe for clients. Regulations usually mean things are safer, but I haven't seen what it is about these mineral pigments that are considered unsafe, especially as the ingredients can still be used, they just have to be mixed with organics. Minerals have been safely used for decades. I'll absolutely be researching this more to try and find the reasoning behind it. The UK is now no longer in the EU, but we may still be adopting these regulations anyway, so we need to be aware. And if it is safer, then it's probably best to practice them and adapt to it now. My concern would be with beginners and people with a high risk of migration. Carbon black is so easy to get wrong and botched eyeliner is incredibly difficult to remove. Are we putting people at risk of migration for no reason? Nevertheless, these are the rules and if you're in the EU, then you need to be abiding by them. Are you in the US? Then your rules may be changing too soon, so you need to stay abreast of any changes. The best thing any of us can do is make sure our training is of a high standard and that we know the danger areas and high risk clients for pigment migration. And for that, you'll need this video. There'll be more pigment videos coming soon from me. See you then.